Hello everyone, we are back, ready to do our second um, part of this loop, two or three. We are going to uh, have a top for humanity and then after that we'll do Main Street from there. Um, if you are new here, I uh, appreciate you coming in, hopping in and taking a look. Um, this is a route of mixed um, small town city driving, if you will. Uh, the reason I am manually driving right now is because navigation's wrong. This is a one-way road. Um, I'm going the one, the correct way. Navigation wants me to go the wrong way uh, for a one-way road. So I have to manually drive here until it reroutes to go our normal route. And then it should allow me to go. There it goes. And so um, I'm going to reiterate uh, that I did this drive yesterday. Um, I did not record it though, so you're gonna have to trust what I say. Um, well, okay, I don't, we're gonna count that. Um, I felt like it was gonna run the red light. Um, I think it would, I think it was gonna stop, but we're gonna count it. Um, that was, that's new behavior, and even from yesterday, new behavior. I had corrected it yesterday and um, turned into the left turn lane here. Um, that's what you should be doing. That's what the car on my left is trying to do. See this car right here? This is correct. My car should have gotten that lane there. I'm pressing the accelerator just to get ahead of that car. But it's still not reading the speed limit sign here. It even displays it on the screen. But it's not reading it for some reason. I don't quite know uh, I wish they would actually fix that uh, they it's detects it so well that it should give a little bit more confidence to the car reading the speed limit sign um, what we're actually gonna do I need to actually do this navigate to the ace hardware so we're actually making a pit stop at ace um, we're first going through the roundabout to get there though uh, that's that's literally on the left side of the road here so it's not like it's gonna uh, take away from this drive at all. And it's actually exactly the same route I did yesterday. So, again, if you're new here, uh, you probably didn't see the last video. I mentioned that phantom braking has improved, but I think it's because um, instead of braking, what they do is instead turn the wheel a little bit to the right. Uh, you can tell it, it knew that car was turning and it did a slight brake for it. But that... Um, but not enough to matter. If, if I wasn't paying attention, like if I was, if this was a robot taxi and I, and I was on my phone, I wouldn't notice that. That type of subtle break, you wouldn't even notice it. Like that break I did. I think that's because of the car to the right. Um, it braked, it had a little bit of latency. That's, this screen actually, when I'm watching my video, is a little bit delayed in what you see in real life. Now, of course, that's not what the actual processing sees. The visual is even, has even more latency than the actual computer is what it, um, what it sees from the cameras and what it, the input gets sent to the steering wheel. Let's see if this is gonna, is this gonna stop completely? Yeah, I, all I did was tap the accelerator once. I'm not pressing it now. That was better from yesterday. It stayed a little bit further out. Um, it stayed more inside of that turn yesterday. Uh, so that was better. It still could do that a little bit faster. It goes, takes it a little bit cautiously. Not necessarily a bad thing. It just... Whoa, see look, see what that car did? It swerved all the way over. We're go, we'll go ahead and record that. I don't know if that's um, worth recording, but we'll do it anyway. Um, and that's, that's why, like, this version especially, if you guys are watching this on a public release, please, please, please make sure to always have a hand on the wheel. Please, um, these last two versions, like I said, they tend to swerve the wheel instead of phantom braking. I think as an improvement, personally, I would rather swerve it a little bit now, going off the road like it did like that. That's that's a little bit much. Um, but swerving the wheel just a little bit, just to get to the edge of the line, I think is much more appropriate than phantom braking, because it just makes the experience so much more pleasant. Uh, when it phantom brakes like every fifth car, it's just like I always have to have my foot over the pedal to make sure it's not gonna like um, brake and cause, cause someone to rear end me. 
You know, like this entire drive, like here we've had one, one phantom brake um, on this video. Now, a phantom brake, I don't know if that was a phantom brake or because of the hill. Oh, and actually it might have been because of my destination. Um, so we're gonna actually get back on this road afterwards and back to video at 10, now we're there. We're back on the road, everyone. <laughs> Gotta love video editing, eh? I'm hoping by next year they'll have like, I don't know if spatial awareness is the right term for it, but um, basically like, you you guys can tell we're getting into town, we're getting into more traffic, into um, more complex streets. The speed limit, if not posted in Hendersonville, is 35 miles an hour. However, um, 35 is kind of fast in this area. Now, illegally, I guess, suppose you can go it. What's it doing? Oh, it's because it was yellow. Okay, now I'm having to press it for... Still haven't, still haven't pressed it. That still has not been fixed. That's no better or worse than it was previously. This car. Okay, they backed up good. The chance we won't make this green light here. Hoping we do. Okay, well, that guy kept on pulling out and cut my corner short, and thus had to do the disengagement. Um, because it was gonna run into that guy right there, for sure. So, while that's not the car's fault, and it's just, it's a unique situation for my other drives, uh, this probably should have been a zero disengagement drive, um, all the way to, to Habitat. We'll see though if it um, obviously still has a chance to mess up here. That was new. Um, I think it's because of the cars on the other side of the road. It kind of swerved back out. It made a nice compound maneuver here yesterday. It got it smoothly got into this lane and then turned uh, because there was no traffic coming. It should be able to go. Apologize for the uh, noise rolling around it. I think those bottles would roll around down there. Going through the oh good it corrected itself. Here's our destination here. We are just gonna go ahead right here and I uh, will navigate us down Main Street. You can see me struggling right there because again the navigation is not great. It just I wish it would just go where I tell it to go. It always decides, hey, we know better, and we actually know where you want to go, even though your point's in a different spot. Oops, forgot the... Let me go ahead and grab this, so you don't have to listen to that. Put my water bottle in here. But yeah, so I'm just going to manually navigate. Once we're on Main Street, I'll just navigate to the end. Um, so yesterday, I did go down Main Street just to test it, just to see how it would go. Um, it seems like it, uh, it, um, didn't do any worse and didn't do any better. It seems like it had a little bit of a smoothness issue, I think. Maybe it's because it was less traffic, I think, but I'm not sure. That was weird. That was actually a really good stop. I did a full stop and kept on going. Oh, look there, another ball screw in front of us. It always makes you wonder now if I look at another Tesla, are they on full self driving too? Or is it just me? Because when I first got this, um, if you guys are new again, um, you don't know, I was one of the first early beta testers. I've had this since um, December of 2020. I wasn't the first ones. They got those in October, uh, in November. But I was in December, so shortly after. And it's um, it was a very unique um, experience to be able to, um, of course, uh, test full self-driving.
I guess they're maybe they're trying to find a parking spot. But um, so it's always fun to know if I if I look at a Tesla, are they also on full self driving or autopilot? That got too close to that curve, really close to that curve. That's what it was doing yesterday. Uh, that's that's hard to explain. Um, it's just was seeing the cutoff corners a little bit more than it did previously. They just turned on the left blinker, huh? I do want to turn right. I'm not sure. That's not going to count as a disengagement, but I do. <laughs> I did want to get for that light. So that's going to be the end right here. It's going to be the end of this video. Um, and yeah, so I think it did well. I'm trying to think. So we had one real disengagement is that right is that all we had just one uh yeah I, th I believe that's it everyone um which is great and that would not have happened if that guy didn't freaking keep on pulling out um so it's still it's still a fault in the car if traffic wasn't there this would have been zero disengagements and that has happened once before so Something that either I just got lucky today. Uh, traffic is about the same as yesterday. Um, but it is definitely better than 10.11. Again, uh, which is what I like to see. Now, Aldi, our next test, is going to be very interesting. So stick around for that. If you're not subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. And we'll be first first to know about that. Especially if you hit that bell notification. You know how that goes. Uh, if, I, if you do want to see these videos right away when they release, that will definitely tell you. Uh, let me know if you have any questions down below in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, everyone.